healthradio.net. That's Dr. D at healthradio.net. You're listening to Health Radio. Health Radio. This is Health Radio. Time now for Ask Dr. DeSilva. Here's Dr. Derek DeSilva. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome once again. Great to have you with me. I thank you very, very much for joining me. Pleasure to have you with us, folks. My number one recommendation for better health are probiotics or the good bacteria. I am a huge fan and a huge proponent of the world of, of probiotics. Joining us right now is Dr. John Taylor. Dr. Ch- uh, Taylor is a naturopathic physician. He's currently the CEO and president of Natural Wellness Centers of America, Inc., and is also the author of the best-selling book, The Wonder of Probiotics, published by St. Martin's Press. And I welcome you to the program, Dr. Taylor. It's a privilege to be here. I'm very happy to be here. Well, first of all, tell us what a naturopath is. And by the way, I love naturopaths and in fact spent a week at Bastyr University about 15 years ago uh, working with the naturopathic doctors up there. I was invited by the president of the university to spend some time with you guys and it was a fantastic experience. I think I learned more from the naturopaths than I think they learned from me. Well, basically the the naturopathic method is trying to use uh, the body's own healing methods to correct things and we're trying to uh, allow the body to do its natural healing without usurping that with drugs or, or, or modalities that aren't really, uh, uh, not really natural. Mm-hmm. And what about probiotics? What are they? Well, probiotics are actually the beneficial bacteria. They're naturally occurring. We have maybe 450 to 500 different species that are uh, found in the human gut. And when they're there in a, in a natural balance, they're going to do a lot of good things for us. They're going to uh, aid with digestion, strengthen the immune system, uh, facilitate iron absorption into our bodies. Uh, some of these little bacteria actually uh, will eat basically our cast-offs, and they're going to manufacture B vitamins and give them directly into our system. So it's, a, it's a, an extremely beneficial uh, relationship between the good bacteria and our bodies. Now, when those bacteria are destroyed, uh, a lot of bad things happen. And when you can put those back in the system and reestablish that balance, a lot of good things happen. So it's not really uh, a, a cure-all for everything, but it does cover a lot of systems in our body. Who should use uh, probiotics or the good bacteria? Well, uh, I would say everybody who is living the American lifestyle even from small children all the way up into, uh, into aged uh, adults. Uh, the, the problem with why we need to supplement with, uh, with good bacteria is that our lifestyle is killing them off in mass. And this is relatively new. If you go back uh, 100 years, of course, we didn't even have uh, antibiotics like we have today. Mm-hmm. Um, the number one consumed beverage was, was water. It wasn't uh, carbonated beverages or sodas. So a lot of things have happened in this world that are killing off that natural balance. So we're not really trying to reinvent anything, but we're seeing that our lifestyle is destroying that. We just need to be aware of that and put them back, put that natural balance back. How often do we need to take them? You know, the old old research was that it was like a garden. You know, if you you nuke them out, if if you have to take an antibiotic for some reason, understand it will kill off the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria, you've got to replant that garden. So we always kind of understood that that was a benefit. The latest research out now is is telling us that there is a very good benefit to having some probiotics mixed into every single meal. Mm -hmm. So as that food is digested and becomes the chyme that moves through our intestinal tract, if that every meal is mixed with some probiotics that there is a whole other level of benefit to digestion, immune system, and the way the body produces and runs through the food. Let's talk about this one by one. Let's talk about the immune system. And, and people say this to me all the time. How does a bunch of bacteria, what do they have to do with the immune system? Well, the, the, the good guy bacteria living in the gut will do one thing directly, is that they will actually produce uh, and manufacture immune mediators. Uh, I tell my clients it's kind of like they're, they're making the weapons to hand out to the white cells, that when the white cells are circulating the body as our guards and police, that they're actually armed finally. So it is a secondary backup to the immune system, and it manufactures immune mediators to fight disease and fight different things. Um, 
the one thing that's a very, very immediate, and it's just by, by the structure of our gut, when the good guy bacteria populate our intestinal tract, they take up all the room, they take up all the space and all the food supply, so that if a bad bacteria finds its way into our system, like an E. coli or salmonella, and right. it tries to implant, well, there's just no room, there's no food uh, that they can live on. So it, it kind of retards that, uh, that disease mechanism. And, you know, there are certain small areas within the intestines, within the, the, the digestive system. They're called Peyer's patches, right? And these is, this is where a lot of the immune globulins and a lot of the immune, uh, as you use the word, modulators and function really begin. And if they're not healthy and if they're not there, that's where the problems start. Exactly. What about digestion? What do the good bacteria have to do with digestion? Well, you know, when we eat food that contains an enzyme, like a raw natural food, it's going to be chewed up, macerated, the enzymes are released, and that will start digesting right away in the stomach and go on down through the intestinal tract. When we eat a food that is cooked or processed, uh, those enzymes have been destroyed by the cooking process. So now our body has to try to supply the enzymes. And we do have organs that make gastric juices. The pancreas will put out some enzymes. Um, but the bacteria are a huge secondary mechanism for that because those bacteria will manufacture enzymes right in the gut, right next to that food that's being digested, and help to break it down even further to facilitate the nutrients getting into our system and benefiting us. Mm -hmm. What do people with digestive problems that have a lack or deficiency of the, the, the good bacteria, how do they present? What, what symptoms do they have? Well, we see a lot of times where they're going to have uh, dumping syndrome. In other words, you can only fit so many meals in our pipeline. And if people have to have a bowel movement immediately after eating, then they are, are not digesting their food. It's being held up for better digestion. It's just not happening. And when you put another meal in the top of the bucket, you've got you to lose it at the bottom. So that's a good sign that you're really not getting good nutrition because you don't have enough time to digest the food. Uh, other times people will have uh, irritable bowel syndrome where the food is not digesting well. And, and how common is that in this country? Actually, it's getting more and more common, and it's also combined with food allergies. People are eating foods, and then when they do not digest, they uh, cause problems. Uh, most allergies that we're seeing from, from foods or organic things, the actual allergen is a protein, and if the protein is not broken down, and it gets into the system, the body does not really know whether it's a flu virus or a bad bacteria or right. whatever. Right. It just knows this is a foreign protein. We need to attack it right now. Right. And this can even develop into autoimmune disease because your body is constantly trying to attack these foreign proteins. What if those it? proteins are broke down, they're no longer proteins. They're now amino acids. Right. And, and this is where the, the, the issue comes in. So it's immune system, digestion. What about elimination? How important is that? Well, elimination, and what do the good bacteria have to do with that? We're running out of time. The elimination is, is controlled by the bacteria in the sense that they control how much moisture content goes into the stool, uh, and they'll regulate that. That's why when you get the flu and the virus kills off your good bacteria, you kind of lose control when you have diarrhea. Okay. All right. So, and, and what about uh, the whole, the last one is the, or the B vitamin production? B vitamin production is great. You know, we're getting a lack of B vitamins in our diet, unfortunately, because all of our carbohydrates are so processed. They take out all the good part of the, uh, of the whole grains, and you're lacking B vitamins. You need B vitamins to convert the carbohydrate into energy. Well, these little bacteria are basically, again, eating our cast-offs, our garbage, and they're manufacturing B vitamins and putting them directly into our bloodstream to facilitate that energy production. So it can make a huge difference in our energy levels. So, folks, immune system, digestion, elimination, and making the B vitamins, those are the basic things that the good bacteria do that we know. What about the beneficial effects on your skin, what it does for your body? The, the, the list just goes on and on and on. As far as I'm concerned, this is my number one recommendation for better health. And where can people get more information about this in your book, um, uh, Dr. Taylor? At the website is nwcnaturals.com. They can actually go there and read a free excerpt from the book, and they can take a look at some of the formulas I've done of uh, different probiotic products. Mm -hmm. 
Once again, nwcnaturals.com, and the book is The Wonder of Probiotics. The publisher is St. Martin's Press. Uh, any closing comments for us? We're almost out of time. No, but if I could get everybody in the world to do two things, use a digestive enzyme for their processed food and take probiotics at every meal, we could eliminate a tremendous amount of problems in this country. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to have you with us, and I hope you'll come back and join us again. Dr. Silva, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. So once again, folks, his name is Dr. John Taylor. Their website is www.nwc. That's Nancy William Charlie Naturals.com. The book is The Wonder of Probiotics. The author, Mr. Uh, Dr. John Taylor. Stay with us. We've got lots more. I'm Dr. Derek De Silva. We'll be right back.